The oil and gas industry is at home on this range. So is a wide variety of grass and shrubs and wildlife. The two have not coexisted without some problems over the past century and a half of oil exploration. Here on the eastern plains of New Mexico, it is the prairie chicken that has struggled to cope with a particular side effect of drilling. The chickens need habitat. The oil exploration requires roadbeds and drilling pads. To ease the pressure on the birds, there are about 30 designated prairie chicken areas, or PCAs, on these plains. In all, they add up to about 28,000 acres of bird-friendly land. They're predominantly shinery oak uh, habitat, mixed grass uh, habitat that the prairie chickens need, and so we've set those aside to manage for prairie chickens. And, and uh, you know, they use those areas for uh, not only if they're, they're breeding grounds, they're lex that, they, that we call them, but also nesting rearing their broods, uh, winter, wintering areas. So they're, they're used greatly by the, by the birds themselves. So they are, it is a, a, a good thing that we have these places set aside. So the designated areas provide more than just a bit of wild beauty. They provide plant and insect life vital for prairie chicken survival. The rough scrub brush called shinnery oak and the bunched grasses blend to form what the birds can call home. There's the insect uh, population that's there to, uh, to provide food for them, food and moisture for the chicks, plus the, uh, the uh, oak itself will provide cover in the form of shade and, and protection from, from uh, avian predators and that sort of thing. While the dancing and strutting of the male prairie chickens at spring mating rituals might make this existence look like something of a poultry party, the reality is that chicken life is loaded with struggle. Of course, then you have all the snakes and the skunks and everything else that do, you, they'll come in by scent. So uh, it's a very hard life to start out with. And then when we come in and, and do the man thing, you know, or the human thing rather, and kind of destroy their habitat unintentionally. That man thing in this case is caliche. That's the almost concrete-like soil hauled in by well drillers to create roads and drilling pads. The well pads are built on the prairie and they're paved, as it were, with caliche so that uh, the heavy equipment won't sink into the sand and they can actually drill the holes in the ground and to recover the uh, the petrol chemicals, whatever they're they're going after. As kids, we used it as chalk on the sidewalk for sidewalk uh, for for hopscotch, and it's pretty much the underneath underneath our sand and our topsoil is a layer of this calcium carbonate caliche, and it makes really good roads. An oil pad isn't all that large, and it's generally serviced by a single road that also provides access to other pads. So, in the vast expanse of these plains. Why does this matter so much? Well, you look at an oil pad and, um, you know, it's not really a very big footprint on the ground. It, you know, it's like 150 feet square and you wouldn't think that would make a big difference. But when there, when there's one of those pads, sometimes every 40 acres, and, and so there could be up to 16 per square mile, um, it adds up quickly and there are thousands of old well pads out here. And so the more of those, and then there's associated roads and everything with those well pads. So uh, you can really recover a lot of acres, um, putting them back, you know, re removing caliche and putting them back into the grass. In this area alone, the agencies working on recovery of prairie chicken habitat have identified about 3,000 abandoned wells and determined that about 900 of them need reclamation work. And since research has indicated birds don't even like being near the man-made roads, the impact expands even farther. And with roads and pads forming a virtual grid on the region, the prairie chicken habitat becomes fragmented and isolating. The solution is relatively simple. Remove the obstacles once the drilling is done. Contractors will come with their heavy equipment. They will remove the caliche and they will either bury it on site, 
move it to another site, or recycle it to some road that's going to stay in place. Recovery of native grasses can still take several years, but it beats the decades it will take without this intervention. Researchers have also discovered the tall, cut-off pipes left when drillers plug the boreholes create an unnatural threat to prairie chickens. In an area with virtually no trees, those poles provide a perch for raptors, making their hunting easier. So the reclamation work now includes cutting those pipes to ground level. All of this effort on behalf of the prairie chicken is slowly changing the landscape. But at least for now, the reclamation workers have to simply trust that what they are doing is helping the birds survive and thrive. But you can't help but believe when you look at a map that looks like a grid with uh, oil and gas roads and pads and you take this layer off and then you take this layer off and you open up a whole new area to grassland again that that cannot be a benefit. As a longtime biologist it would be a feather in my cap if I could say hey I was part of something that brought this bird to the point where he's now stable. It would be great if we could do that. <laughs>